In this video, I will explain the relationship between the budget line and indifference curves in microeconomics. So consider the following example. Let's say that burgers cost $5 each, pizzas cost $10 each, and you have a total income of $100. Now, if we were to create a graph of these two goods with burgers on the y-axis and pizzas on the x-axis, I've drawn three indifference curves here, which I've labeled U1, U2, and U3. So each point on each of these individual indifference curves represents a combination of burgers and pizzas that would give you the same level of satisfaction. So for example, this point right here, and this point right here, and this point right here, all of these points on the same indifference curve give you the same level of satisfaction or utility. And I've labeled this as U1 to show that this indifference curve gives you a level of utility known as U1. Now every point on the indifference curve U2 gives you a higher level of utility than every point on the indifference curve U1. And similarly, U3 gives you even more utility. Now in the real world, obviously you would love to consume a combination of burgers and pizzas that lies on indifference curve U3 because this gives you the most utility but you are constrained by your total income. So if burgers cost $5 each, if you spent all of your income of $100 just on burgers, you could buy 20 burgers. So what we can do is we can draw a budget line where the y-axis starts at 20. So if you spent all of your income on burgers, you could buy 20 burgers. Or if you spent all of your income on pizza, remember pizzas are $10 each, you could buy 10 pizzas. So on the x-axis down here, our x-intercept is 10 pizzas. And this red line represents your budget line. So this is every combination of burgers and pizzas that you could buy given that your budget or your income is $100. Now the question becomes, at what point on this graph, point A, B, or C, at what point do you maximize your utility? Well, at point A, B, and C, we're spending the same amount because notice that all of these points are on our budget line. So we're spending $100 at each of these points but we can see that the point that allows us to maximize our utility is point B because this point is touching the indifference curve U2. And notice that point A and point C are both touching U1. So we said that every point on indifference curve U2 is going to give us more satisfaction or more utility than every point on U1. So point B is the point that maximizes our utility given our budget constraint. So this is important to remember. The basket of consumption that maximizes the utility lies on the highest indifference curve that touches the budget line. So again, in this case, the highest indifference curve is U2 that actually touches this budget line and that occurs at point B right here. Now let's consider the scenario where the price of one of these goods changes. So let's say that the price of pizza actually increases to $20 per pizza. When this happens, our budget line on our graph will move. So remember previously, if we spent all of our money on pizza, we could buy 10 pizzas. But now if pizza costs $20 each and we only have an income of 100, that means if we spent all of our income on pizza, we could only buy five pizzas now. So our budget line would shift downwards and the number of pizzas that we could buy is only five. So now when this happens, let's call, let's say we have a new point right here. Let's say this is point D. The point that maximizes our utility now is point D because this is the point now where the budget line touches the highest indifference curve. So because of our new budget constraint, we're only able to reach indifference curve U1 now. So we'd love to be out here at U2, but our budget constraint has changed. Our budget no longer allows us to actually reach point B out here. So in this case, point D maximizes our utility. Now let's consider the scenario where our income changes. So let's say our income increases from $100 to $150. So now in this case, if we spent all of our money on burgers, we could buy 30 burgers. And if we spent all of our money on pizza, we could now buy 15 pizzas. So in other words, our entire budget constraint is going to be shifted outwards. So let's see what that looks like. So now our new budget constraint, we could buy 30 burgers or 15 pizzas. So our entire budget constraint has shifted outwards. And what we'll notice now is there's a new point right here. Let's call it point E, where our budget line is now touching the indifference curve U3. So because our income increased, our budget line increased, and now we're able to get all the way out here to point E. So this is the point that would maximize our utility. So that was just a quick explanation of the relationship between budget lines and indifference curves, along with the effects of changes in prices of goods and changes in income.